Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. It's Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea Tranquility alongside three weeks in a row now. Mr. Stephen Reed in the co-captain's chair. He's got some uh, cool new things to our cool new CD to share with you all today. And we hinted at it at last week's episode, but he actually has the physical copy in this week. So uh, Gandalf's Fist, what do we got? There we go. Well, I've got Widder Shins. Okay. Widder Shins. It's not really written. Is it written anywhere? I don't know if it is. W I double D E R S H I N S. Wither Shins. Okay. Come to that in a second. All right. So, yeah, this is Gandalf's Fist. This is their ninth full studio album. They've got lots and lots and lots and lots of releases EPs, standalone singles, live albums, re releases, compilations, remasters. Nine studio albums formed in 2005. For anyone that doesn't know, they are a well, I was going to say a traditional symphonic progressive rock act, and that really doesn't do them proper service because they have really quite a bespoke sound, I would suggest. They're a bit spacey, but they're not space rock. They are prog, they're definitely prog rock, they're definitely progressive rock. They undoubtedly fall into those realms. But you don't immediately think, oh, well, there's this and there's that. There's a bit of Genesis here and there's a Floyd there. But nothing that would make you think, oh, well, I know what they listened to when they were young in that sense. And yet, they are undoubtedly very UK-centric progressive rock. And the UK-centric bit comes across also in a little bit of the humour that always kind of runs alongside everything that they do, but not enough to make you think that they're doing anything other than proper serious progressive rock okay so yes this is the ninth album okay the band is formed around a guy called dean marsh okay he sings quite a lot of the songs he is a multi-instrumentalist i would list what he has played on all their albums but that would be the review so let's not do that and alongside him all the way has been a guy called luke severn and he is a keyboard player at times he is a co-lead vocalist a backing vocalist on some of their albums, he's right up front, but on other albums, he's barely there. It's a very interesting dynamic, and it makes the albums quite different as you go through them. And it also features one or two different, not guest vocalists, but members of the band that don't always necessarily appear on all of the albums, or certainly not all of the songs. You never quite know what you're going to get in that sense. So the main vocalist on Widder Shins is Kerry Farish. She is fantastic, I have to say. And the rest of the band is made up from Stefan Hepp on drums that people might remember from Nemo. Uh, he plays with GPL as well, which was the offshoot from that. Ben Bell on synths, who's a variety of different things, as well as being a solo artist. And then Chris Ewan is the bassist in this band. Although, in the booklet here, I have to admit that he is credited as Bargain Snacks. <laughs> So I'm guessing he's still the bassist in the band. I'm not 100% convinced he played bass on the album. Not really 100% sure. So, yeah, in this day and age, there's always a million different types of ways you can buy this album. That's an exaggeration. There's three or four. So you've got the standard CD, which I did get, but I didn't really because I couldn't help myself. I've got the deluxe version, which comes in this nice slidey out thing that's got a foam in it and all this kind of stuff. And I'm sure that came with what you're wearing. Uh, there you go. Indeed. Also comes with a bonus disc of material that is, some of it is bespoke to this release. Other than it's different versions and various things, but some of the songs are only on here, but the versions are only on here. So it's all exclusive. It came with a nice outsized, not a massive booklet, but booklet with things about, I'll explain about this in a second, okay, and here's the band, nice and signed, all this kind of stuff, and it came with a set of tarot cards, okay, which are, these are the song titles, uh -huh. okay, and they are actually quite beautiful. Yeah, those are pretty neat. Really nice, and, and quite different, and there are obviously instructions on how to play, use, interact, 
with your tarot cards. Okay, so directions for mind toad based divination. Okay, as I said, there's always a little bit of humor involved in a Gandalf's fist release somewhere or other. So, firstly, you need to transfer energy to your deck before reading them. We recommend sitting on them. Okay, that way they'll get nice and warm. Or you could just plug them into the mains, although you will need a type B NEMA plug, not supplied. And it goes on. I won't go into the whole thing, but it goes on in that kind of tone. And I kind of like that tone. It's a little tongue in cheek. They do not take themselves too seriously. But man, can they play? So, Widdershins. Okay. What does it mean? Well, I should know it would appear because it supposedly comes from Scots or Scottish. Okay. Uh, it means to go, well, counterclockwise, but more precisely, counter to the sun's course. And as such, it is seen as quite an unlucky thing to do. It's unwise and generally the kind of omen that one would avoid. However, that would appear to be the main starting point for the album. It's not a concept album. Gandalf's Fist, for anyone that's watched maybe some of that in the prog see, shows that we've done where I've spoken about the band before, they've done almost radio plays to music, which are phenomenal. Uh, the Clockwork Fable is outstanding, one of my favourite releases of the last 10 years. This is not a concept album. It's more of a themed album. And all of the songs kind of deal with the human reliance on superstition or those kind of traditions that come from many, many moons ago that we oh, kind of rely on and go back to and talk about and we touch wood and all this kind of stuff. And it just kind of investigates those through the lyrics. But they're not overbearing, so if that's not your kind of thing, don't worry about it because the sound is phenomenal. So yeah, there's eight tracks here. Okay, the shortest runs to just over four minutes. Most are seven minutes plus. So there's lots of room, and there tends to be, with Gandalf's Fist, there's lots of room for phenomenal interplay between the musicians, solo slots. You tend to find that more than one instrument will get a chance to shine in a solo slot in certain songs. Lots of vocal interplay. There tends to be one or two or three or more people singing within one song. And I really like that. Sometimes the more backing vocals, but there's such an interest because it's not just one voice that you hear all the way through. I would personally suggest that this, for anyone that's heard the band before, they're quite kind of ethereal in their sound. It's always a bit kind of wistful and, and mystical. They do a kind of a few space-based albums and various things like that. There's always a kind of fantasy element. This is a little bit more forceful. They've retained all of those elements. They still sound like themselves. I would say that this is possibly their, I hate to say the word heaviest, but there are riffs on this album. This Hard, album was hardest riffs. rocking then, for sure. Definitely the hardest rocking, yes, absolutely. Um, and it's re it really works. It really works. Sacrament opens the album. There's great howling Hammond in there, and it really strikes off some excellent guitar work. Farish's vocals, Kerry Farish's vocals are fantastic. It's straight out of the box. There's no doubt about that. But then from there, they go into the more considered title track. You know, and it's clever because you do, you think it's more considered and it's a bit more reserved. But the little keyboard stabs that come through, there's guitar swipes, and there's, same again, layer backing vocals. It never kind of lags at any point. And then there is the Haru specs. Okay, you always discover new words and new things with one of this band's albums. <laughs> this is somebody who practices divination by reading the innards of animals. <laughs> I think you stir them about with a stick or whatever, and then you tell somebody their future, I would presume. And there's a mystical ear here that does kind of slither and slide and it kind of fits with the theme and it's a bit yuck and feek and great. <laughs> At the same time, they really build an atmosphere very well. Um, Dreamcatcher, it kind of is a bit more floating. There's really good vocals and guitars on there. And then Wisp has a kind of medieval feel to it. But then the guitar solo on Mana Signs and the trade-off between that and the organ that's there, oh, really, really good. And then Witchmonger, as you might expect, is a little bit more sinister. Now, that leads into the nearly 20-minute cave. That's the final track. And to me, it's the kind of crux of the album. Everything up to this point has been really, really good. But you get to that, 
and this is where they let loose. There are different passages, lots of kind of different ideas and themes, but it all interlocks. Everybody gets a chance to kind of step to the front, all the different instruments. Vocals are excellent all the way through. And it really kind of just captures, I think, the whole kind of mood and tone of what Gandalf's Fist are about. And yet it is more powerful and it is harder rocking than I would suggest really very much it come prior to this. And it's one of those things where you, I've never thought before, oh, Gandalf's fisting to ramp up the guitars a little bit. And then you do, and you go, oh, oh, oh why have they not done that before? <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. Because the guitar play has always been great, but it tends to kind of be on a level with everything else where you kind of think, yeah, there's a great guitar solo here, and then it will kind of recede a little bit again. Here the guitars are actually picking sections up and kind of running with them. Really, really like it. It's a really strong album, and it's a really cohesive album. I will admit... This was a slow burn for me. Okay. Now, I've got quite a history with this band. I've been on board for a good oh, five, six, seven years and around there, maybe a little longer now. Um, I've certainly been on board for the past four or five albums and I've gone back and bought earlier things. So you, I kind of knew what to expect. And even at that, I put it on and kind of thought, oh, okay, yeah, it's good. Is it as good as what's come before? And I love the couple of albums that have come before. So I brought that baggage in, admittedly. But now, now that I've been fortunate enough because I've had a download to, to talk about and review up until the physical arrived this week, now that I've lived with it for really quite some time, we're right up there. I, yeah. Has it not been something to be my favourite? I'm not sure because The Clockwork Fable really is kind of special release for me. That, that was something that was just out of this world. I don't think a band can have more than one of them, certainly not consecutive, the way that things kind of work. But it's really, really good, really impressed. Uh, and it kind of took six or seven listens before I started to think, ah, okay, it's beginning to click now. And the more I listen to it, the better it gets. Um, and as ever, there are lots of different versions out there. As I said, I touched on the deluxe version in the standard CD. It is also for those people who are, and vinyl is back, and it's in, and I must admit, I'm also a vinyl head still these days. There's a fantastic looking double white vinyl version of the album, which kind of accentuates. I really like the album art, I have to say. It's kind of very cool. Indeed. Oh, that gives a better picture than just the, the front. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes something else there. And there is a really nice booklet and everything inside that you've got. There's the, the disc itself. But as I say, there is a, a, a big booklet that comes with, with a white vinyl version, which I haven't seen. But if it expands on what we've got here, so we've got lyrics and you've got your tarot cards and it all kind of ties it together. It's really nice, well thought through. Gandalf's Fist don't really just tend to kind of throw our songs together and make an album that always tends to be a theme and an idea. And they do tend to carry it through in, in the whole booklet and kind of the release and the way that it looks. There's been a lot of thought involved in that. Are also, if you like that kind of thing, there's test pressings on vinyl of the album available. So there's a double black vinyl version as well. So there are lots of different options and they're all best available from the band's own website, which I have always found to be very quick, very reliable, uh, and comes well packaged and all that kind of malarkey. So I know that a lot of people don't like to kind of go outside of the stores, but I personally would go straight to the band for this. And there are immediately international shipping and various things on the site. You don't have to work it out and think about it. It's all there on the drop down when you go to it. So that's where I would head if you were interested in buying it. And I would personally recommend it highly. Okay. Yeah, I was just uh I was just looking at like their prior releases because I've I've never listened to this band. Strangely. That, I wanted I to ask you that because I know this band, I think I think uh, not necessarily hundred percent certain. I think that you first sent me one of their albums to review. I and might have I, I know the amount you get in, you then just think, well, you read a bit or whatever and think they might like this, they might like that, and they go out because clearly you can't listen to the hundreds of releases that come through the system. Yeah. But I did wonder if you'd ever heard them because I think yeah. there's a lot that you would like. I don't think so. It's, and I'm, I'm looking, uh, I'm on Prague Archives right now, which is a place I normally go to look up uh, yeah. Prague stuff. Yeah. And, you know, they've got a lot of albums, a lot of great album covers. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, some of them, and they're all rated very, really high. Like, yeah. you know, five star, you know, five, four out of five or higher on almost every single one of them. So, um, yeah. I might want to check it. So, Clockwork Fable, you'd say. I love the cover to Road of Darkness. That's yeah, funny. yes, isn't that fun? To, I would say it, the Clockwork Fable is one that really resonates with me. Okay, 
Now, the reason for that is because I really like, I will, on occasion, when I used to drive around for a living, which I don't these days, I also used to take like books on CD and all this kind of thing and kind of music some days, listen to some stories other days. The Clockwork Fable does that with them. There's not just a little bit of narration. It's genuinely there are sections where there are actors and characters talking to each other and there is a story that really is as good as the music that runs across a three CD release. So it's a sprawling epic where the story is fantastic, lots of humour, but the music is phenomenal. It ties it all together. So if you like that kind of thing, and I, I'm aware that not everybody loves these kind of overblown story pieces, that to me is the best thing that they've done. This is not far behind, but the, and I'm going to forget the title, so you've got it in front of you, but the Universal Warrior one. Yes, a day in the life of a universal wanderer. Yeah, that's where I came in. Okay. Okay, okay. so that's the first thing that I heard. And yeah, I that's twenty thirteen, a forest of fate. Twenty fourteen, Clockwork Fable. Twenty sixteen, oh, Clockwork so Prologue. Twenty nineteen, yeah. the remaster of the Monkey. Twenty twenty one, and then Wittershins here. So yeah. they're pretty consistent album a year type of thing, you know. For the most yeah, part. there's been an album a year, and they also do tend to put out some standalone singles that tend to be on Bandcamp and various things like that in between. They have, I think because, thankfully, they've started to get a little bit more notice in recent times. They've gone back and kind of brushed up some earlier releases, which have shown up really well. Um, they have also gone back and kind of put in Decanium, I think it was called. So it's like a 10-year retrospective album. Decanium, came out, yeah. Yeah, came out not that long ago, just a few months back. Yeah. Uh, and that's really strong as well. So there are lots of options if you think this sounds like something that I want to get into. There are lots of options where you could maybe go and listen to like a retrospective that would give you ideas across the catalogue. But I would suggest that really Clockwork Fable, if you if you think you would like that story-based thing, there are actors on there that I see on BBC television, for example. Mark Benton's been in Early Doors, Shakespeare and Hathaway. Loads of things. So it's, these are not amateurs that are doing this. They went out and got the best. But then the, the day in the life of Universal Warrior, that also, that's the one that hooked me. That's the one that I immediately thought, wow, this really is something special. And from there, I've gone backwards and forwards with the catalog. So, yeah. I'll go listen to a couple, see what I think. You know. But I'm also, I can't argue with this. If you want to start with Wither Shins and you maybe like your guitars a bit more forceful, which maybe sits better with yourself, Pete, arguably. I mean, I don't know, because you've got a really, like myself, wide and varied taste, and like many of the people watching yeah, us. I'll check out a couple of them and see see what, if any of it sounds comes highly recommended to. Yeah, okay. I've always heard good things about them. I know you've been talking great things about them for years, so I figure, why not? And so, you know, which I'm sitting here listening to you describe the new album, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's one of those bands you just, you never checked out, <laughs> even though you heard such great things about them. It's like, well, maybe it's time. So I will do that. So good. So there you have it, everybody. Winter Shins by Gandalf's Fist. Uh, brand new. Uh, if you've already heard it, let us know what you think of it down in the comments below. And if you haven't, be like me. Go check it out. Come back and report in. Let us know what you think. So I want to thank Stephen for uh, sharing this with us today. And uh, you've got a uh, review up on the website as well. On Yeah, there's, yeah I, one of my <coughs> short reviews. Yes, I saw that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's reasonably lengthy. Yes. So if you, if you want, you want to hear lengthy. all about the little intricacies, go read the, uh, the on www.seatranquility.org. Go check it out there. And uh, we'll see you uh, shortly here with more stuff today. It is Wednesday, so we've got lots of new uh, album reviews for you here today. Uh, should be getting new motorcycle today. Steve Smith and Vital Information Collection. Um Going to try and get to uh, Van and Plaza Live, Zappa Live, got all sorts of stuff. So um, we'll see what happens as the day goes on. So thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web, like I said, at www.ctranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Okay. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please, please do hit the like button. Thanks for watching, everybody. For Steve and Reed, I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you shortly here with more stuff. Take care.